Have you ever heard of a gold bug? It's a term familiar for those in investing communities, finance bros, Bitcoiners, and so on. It's used for people who bullishly invest in or hoard gold. Gold bugs are likely to support the return to a gold standard. I love gold! Famously, this group would include Peter Schiff, an amusing personality in the financial space. I disagree with Peter on Bitcoin, but very much enjoy him nonetheless, and his overall economic analysis is usually really interesting. But why would someone call Peter a bug? Strange, no? I was curious, so I looked into it. Well, it turns out there's a short story from 1843 by Edgar Allan Poe called The Gold Bug, and this is the source. I've read my share of Poe, but had never encountered this one. It was apparently one of Poe's better known stories when he was alive and writing, eventually to be eclipsed by the raven. Poe observed in a letter that the bird beat the bug. The story seems to have had resounding literary influence, most notably inspiring key plot points to Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Stay with me here, because there's a twist to all of this that shocked me. The story has some familiar themes to Poe's other works, a focal character simmering in resentment and a growing madness. The unnamed narrator visits this ticking time bomb at an island property in South Carolina. There's a reason why the gold bug might not be remembered quite as well. There is a black servant character named Jupiter who is, well, a minstrel show character. He's not bright to the extent that he will confuse his left and right eyes. Jupiter found a parchment with a gold scarab. This turns out to be a treasure map using invisible ink and encoded instructions. The directions, once decoded, are to drop the golden scarab through the eye socket of a skull nailed to a specific tree limb above some rugged terrain on the island. Jupiter is, of course, tasked with doing this labor and screws up due to his limited intelligence. Later, this error is figured out and eventually a treasure of gold coins and jewelry is dug up along with two skeletons. Most likely the laborers that originally dug the hole to hide this booty for the infamous pirate Captain Kidd. Dead men tell no tales. That's all well and good, but there's a particularly important quirk to this story that blew me away once I learned it. The gold bug contains one of American literature's early examples of cryptography, and indeed was responsible for popularizing the concept, hitherto regarded as mysterious and unapproachable. Bitcoiners and gold bugs frequently swim in the same waters, so the fact that this tale, a Poe tale no less, is famous for its use of cryptography? That's bananas. Things move quickly on the internet. We've fallen behind, way behind. Is that my good butter? But back in 2016 or so, there was a term you would often hear, meme magic. This is a little piece of internet lore that observes that the combined will of the online community seems to be able to collectively manifest artifacts into reality much like the orcs in Warhammer 40k, whose joint psychic beliefs can strangely modify reality. Meme magic takes jokes from the realm of cyberspace and transcends them into the real world. Let's take a look at a famous example. Purveyors of Pepe, a cartoon frog incorrectly labeled by the media as a symbol of the alt-right, but correctly aligned with the cult of Keck. Um, okay, how to explain this? Pepe was an existing anthropomorphic frog character from the cartoon comic 
Boys Club by Matt Fury that 4chan began to use for their own memes and purposes. Meanwhile, heck, due to some Korean StarCraft influence, was an alternative for LOL that made its way into World of Warcraft, particularly in the Orcish language in that game universe. These online peculiarities eventually broke free of their origins and made their way into something closer to what passes as mainstream on the internet. Then internet jokesters created a whole fake religion, the Cult of Keck, about a frog deity with an invented history going back to ancient Egypt. Then it was discovered that an Italian band named P.E.P.E. Pepe had a record song from 1986 called Chatelet, and on that record, there's a frog. It also just happened to be noticed by fans of newcoming internet sensation Jordan Peterson that he sounds a lot like Kermit the Frog. First time someone said that, I thought, huh. So I went and listened to Kermit, and I thought, <clears throat> oh yeah, I do have a voice that's similar to that. And he himself was floored to notice that he'd been manifesting all sorts of frog imagery. And so I just about fainted when I, after I posted that, and people start, people pointed out the correspondence with Peppy. Really, I, I just about fainted. It was, and that doesn't happen very often. Like, <laughs> this is from a man who intensely studied and taught with the influence of Carl Jung, famous for archetypal patterns in psychology found in storytelling, meme magic my friends is real.